Hey game developers, Bilal from Zenfinity.net and welcome to another Unity tutorial. Now in this one we're going to learn how to fire guns using both projectiles and colliders. Just download the project files from up here or from the description below and let's get shooting. Okay, welcome to the editor and if you haven't already, make sure to go ahead and download those starter packages in the top right or from the description below and then just go ahead and open that Unity package and import it into a new project. Once you've done that, make sure you just go into the Scenes folder and double click on this main scene and you will see what's in front of me right now. And the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and create our bullet prefab. Now to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into our scene here and create a new 3D capsule. I'll pull this thing up in the scene view here and I'll type in some predefined properties here. So to begin with, our rotation on X is going to be 90 because we want it to be pointing in the same direction as a gun and our scale is going to be 0.1 on each axis. Okay now that's starting to look a lot more like a bullet although it still <laughs> is very cartoony um, but let's go ahead and add a rigid body to this so that we can give it some physics. Um, and the last thing that I want to do is make sure we check this capsule collider as a trigger and this is very important, I'll say it again, make sure that we turn this into a trigger by pressing this check here. And that's because we do not want it to push our colliders backward. We want uh, simply to hit the collider and um, make the bullet disappear because that way we can apply our effects. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm just gonna go ahead and name this bullet. And I'll click on our prefabs folder and I'll drag it in here and it'll automatically create a new prefab. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and create a script that's going to drive our bullet's behavior. So let me go ahead and create a new C-sharp script here. And then I'll call this bullet behavior. Behave here. Oh, sorry, I have these reversed. Behavior, there we go. Okay, let me go ahead and open this one. And now that it's loaded up, let me go ahead and create our attributes as usual first. So we're going to need a bullet, oh sorry, actually we do not need the bullet prefab. Uh, we won't need any attributes in this uh, script actually. All we need to do is have an on trigger enter function and that just is called when a trigger and a collider come in contact with each other. So let's go ahead and write private void on trigger enter. And in here, first what I want to do is type print hit, and I'll put a space here because we're going to add on the other thing's name, and then we're going to put an exclamation mark at the end for fun, so that whenever we uh, hit something with this bullet, it will print the other object's name. Okay, and then finally I just want to destroy this game object after we're done doing that. And that's actually all we have to do for the bullet's behavior. Um, there is something that's optional in the future, but we'll come back to that in just a moment. For now, let's go ahead and open up Unity again. And in here, let's go ahead and create a new script called Player Weapon. Player Weapon. And this will, of course, let us shoot. Now, um, it's important for us to do uh, to go ahead and create a spawn for our bullet before we go ahead and edit that script. So I'm going to go ahead and go into this isometric left view and on this arm component or uh, game object here I'm going to right click it and I'm going to hit create empty and I'm going to rename this to bullet spawn. Now this of course is where our bullet will spawn and I'll just go ahead and drag it to the edge here of our player's arm and perfect. So now let's go ahead and edit our player weapon script here. And I'll go ahead and pull Visual Studio over again. And we are going to start with the attributes now where we need a prefab for which our bullet is going to be. So public game object bullet prefab. And that's uh, the prefab that we're going to instantiate, of course. Now let's have a transform uh, transform bullet spawn which is that spawner we just made and we'll make a float for how fast the bullet will go in any direction which is equal to 30 
and then let's create a lifetime for the bullet, which means that after this lifetime, the bullet should disappear, and I'll set this to three by default. Okay, now in our update function, let's go ahead and make a check for if we press space. So if input.get key down key code dot space, then of course we want to fire, and I'll comment this out for now. Okay, now let's go ahead and write our destroy bullet after time coroutine here. So private I enumerator. And what this is going to do is use that lifetime that we just wrote uh, to destroy our uh, bullet after a certain period of time. So let's go ahead and write destroy bullet after time. And this will take a game object bullet, which is the instantiated bullet, not the prefab. And let's write our delay here, which is going to be that uh, lifetime that we'll be passing here. So since this is a coroutine, what we'll do is yield return new wait for seconds, game object bullet. Oh, sorry, actually, we'll just pass in delay so that um, everything that happens after this code um, will, of course, not happen until this wait for seconds go th goes through. So basically, after the delay, um, we will destroy the bullet here. Okay, now let's go ahead and write our fire function. And I'll put it right here, private void fire. And that means we can uncomment this. And now let's go ahead and write all the contents of it. So of course, the first thing that we want to do is instantiate our bullet from that prefab we specified. So game object bullet equals instantiate bullet prefab. Okay, and that will put it into the scene, but we also want to ignore the collision between that bullet and our player's arm. So to do that, let's type in physics.ignore collision bullet.get component collider and then bullet spawn dot parent dot get component collider. Okay, and of course this will just ignore, or it will tell Unity to always ignore the collisions between these two. We only need to call it once. Um, and the reason we're doing bullet spawn dot parent is because we have a reference to the bullet spawn already, and its parent is the arm of the uh, player, which is where the bullet's going to be spawning. So as long as we ignore that collision, um, it'll be fine in this scenario. In the future, if you expect your bullets to fly through your player, but you don't want them to, then you'll need to ignore collision with the entire player's colliders. Okay, let's add a semicolon here to finish that off. And the next thing we want to do is set the position of our bullet here. So let's do bullet.transform.position equals bullet spawn dot position, which means we spawn it at that bullet spawns point, uh, plain and simple there. Now let's do quaternion, actually this is a vector 3 rotation equals bullet dot transform dot rotation dot Euler angles. And um, what this is doing is just converting our quaternion rotation to a vector 3. Um, it's just so that we can read it in angles from 0 to 360 on each axis. Okay. Now let's go ahead and set the rotation of our bullet here. So bullet dot transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot Euler. And what that does is it converts a vector 3 to a quaternion. And if you don't know what a quaternion is, don't worry about it. It's just a measure of rotation. And we just need to convert it to a quaternion uh, whenever we set the rotation of a transform. OK, so rotation dot x. And then we want the transforms, Euler, Euler angles, sorry, Euler angles dot y and rotation dot z. So this way we keep the same rotation of the bullet, but then over here we are taking the y rotation of our player so that we rotate the bullet in the correct direction so that it is facing forward out of the gun. Okay. Now the very, uh, well the second to last thing we're going to do here is add the force to our rigid body here. So let's write bullet.getComponent rigid body dot add force 
bullet spawn dot forward times bullet speed. And we want to use the force mode dot impulse here. And that's all we have to do there. So what that's doing is, of course, taking the forward direction and applying the speed to it so that we turn our velocity into a you know direction that's going in front of this bullet spawn wherever that's rotated and we multiply it by that speed so that the uh, bullet goes you know very fast then we use impulse force mode because we only want this to happen once we don't want to try to add a continuous force we want it to instantly launch the bullet forward okay the very last thing we're going to do in this function is start the coroutine to destroy our bullet a very long function i know um, but this is all we have to do for the rest of it. So bullet and lifetime. And that's just, of course, calling this function we just wrote down here. And what that'll do is wait three seconds, considering our lifetime is set to three seconds, and then destroy this game object. Now, there are better ways than destroying. If you want uh, to actually check that out, there is a video on object pooling in the top right right now. Go ahead and click that card if you want more information on being more um, you know, optimized in that regard. Okay, so that's all we have to do for our player weapon script, I believe, for now. So why don't we go ahead and hop back into Unity and see if we can spawn this bullet after we assign all these properties. So let's go ahead and click on our player rigid body uh, movement prefab here. And in here we should just add our player weapon. So let's drag that onto it. Player weapon, there we go. And we should, oh, it looks like I have an error really quick. So yeah, over here, I just didn't put a space between the two, so sorry about that. Okay, uh, is rigid body lowercase? Oh, that's why. Yeah, so we just need a lowercase uh, rigid body there. And I believe that should be it. And yeah, so now we have our player weapon added. Um, and what I'll do next is go ahead and find our bullet prefab here and put it in our bullet prefab. And our bullet spawn will be this bullet spawn that we have over here. You can also drag it from there. And I'll hit save. And now we can actually just test out, I believe, if this will spawn our bullets. And it looks like they're being shot downward. And the reason for that is that our bullet spawn is rotated incorrectly. So if we look at that, um, we can see our z-axis, which is the forward, is pointing downward. And that's because our arm is rotated on the x by 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is, on our bullet spawn, type in a negative 90 in our x rotation. And that way our forward will become the correct direction. So now if I hit space, we can see our bullets are being fired perfectly. Okay, so that's fine. But what if we want to actually hit an enemy with it? And to do that, why don't we just go ahead and duplicate our player here. I'll go into perspective mode in the scene. And create an enemy who will then get hit by all these bullets. So I'll get rid of this guy's arm because he does not need one. And I'll go ahead and drag from our materials the orange one to differentiate between the player and him. And I'll get rid of these controllers. Okay. So now our bullet behavior, which we wrote earlier, as you can see over here, should just hit, uh, it should actually print this and destroy itself whenever we hit the enemy, simply because it has a collider. Yep, okay, so we just need to go ahead and add our bullet behavior here. And now that we've added our bullet behavior onto the bullet prefab, I'll go ahead and uh, actually delete this from the scene. And now let's go ahead and hit play and see if our bullets will disappear when we hit them. And there we go. Yeah, it says hit player rigid body movement one. If I go ahead and rename this to enemy, hit space again, it'll say hit enemy, and that's working properly. Okay, so that is actually it for the firing tutorial, and I hope it helped you out. And if it did, make sure to hit that like button and hit subscribe for more tutorials like this. And like I said, uh, we are destroying a lot of objects in this, so if you want to increase the performance of your Unity games, go ahead and click that video in the top right. It's a tutorial on object pooling and how to make this kind of stuff work a lot easier with only one line of code. Um, so with all that said, go ahead and check out this next card. It's a free ebook on all the tools that you need to create your first game right now, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.